Hi everyone, this is me, Park. Welcome to another video tutorial in my blog and YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to color your floral images using Mizello Mission Gold watercolors. My inspiration came from the talented Irum's watercolor card, but my watercoloring didn't turn out as I expected. In the beginning of this video, you will see my first attempt at the watercolor card, which I ended up throwing it away. Anyway, I'll add a link to her blog post in the description box below, so make sure to check out her amazing watercolor card. This video is part of all new Build of Flower Block Hub celebrating the beauty of a wide variety of flowers. Each Build of Flower stamp set is bundled with its coordinating dies, making it simple for you to start creating right away. Make sure to check out my blog for more details and don't forget to enter a giveaway. For my project today, I'm going to use the Build of Flower Anemone set as the flower image has a large opening which is perfect for coloring project. This is the layering stamp set but I'm going to use only outline images. I'm stamping the images on a piece of print paper to test out the placement of my flowers and leaves. I always have A2 size print papers handy to practice my projects so I don't waste my expensive Nina Soul White cardstock or watercolor paper. When it comes to watercoloring, my favorite paper is Artist Cold Pressed Watercolor Paper. But in this video, I'm going to use Fabriano Cold Pressed Extra White Watercolor Paper for the first time. I've always wanted to try out this paper since I watched Christian Waters video tutorial using this paper. I'm going to start by cutting my watercolor paper in 4 and a quarter inches by 5 and a half inches using Timor's tonic paper trimmer. I will be using my mini misty for stamping today. If you don't have this tool, you could use a regular acrylic block or any other stamp positioning tool. I'm going to place my flower stamp on my watercolor paper. Today I'll be doing some no line watercoloring, but I still want my images to look visible. So here I'm making up the stamp with a Memento Tuxedo Black ink and stamp it on the posting node. Then I'm going to stamp the image on my watercolor panel using second generation stamping so my image doesn't look too intense, but I still can see the outline. You don't have to use a black ink for no line watercoloring. I see many people use Timur's Distress ink and Tick Renan instead. I'm going to cut out the image on the post note with my scissors, cutting slightly inside of the stamping line. I'm going to layer my mask of the stamped flower on my panel, covering the image completely. Then I'll be stamping my second flower and leaves over my mask, positioning the stamps partially onto the mask. I'm going to continue stamping and masking until I finish creating my own floral arrangement. Once I'm done stamping, I'm going to watercolor my images using Peerless Watercolor Seeds. This is one of my favorite watercolors as it has such bright and vibrant colors. I have no idea what I was thinking while coloring this piece, but I kept adding layers for some reason and my watercoloring ended up looking like a mess. Since I wasn't happy with my watercoloring, I took a photo of this watercolor piece and sent the photo to my friend Iram to get some advice from her. She suggests me to paint from light to dark, as I can always make it darker. She also says she uses a very small paintbrush, like a number 00, number 0, or number 1, to add details to our coloring. After a few minutes of some frustration, I decided to start it over, as I really wanted to create a watercolor card using the Build of Flower Anemone set to join the Build of Flower block hub. This time, I'm going to stamp my images using Simon Says Stamp Smoke Ink. Due to the texture of my watercolor paper, I'm going to stamp my images twice to get a nice and solid outlines. You could heat emboss your images using white embossing powder if you want to get more soft look of your watercolor images in the end. Once my stamping is done, I'm going to remove the mask to rebuild the entire images and dry my paper using heat tool to make sure I don't get my ink smudged while coloring. I'll be taping down my watercolor paper on the cheaper seat using washi tape. 
This will help prevent my paper from warping while watercoloring. It also helps me move around the position of my watercolor panel without touching my watercolor piece. This is my coloring book that I practiced with the other day, and I wanted to create a watercolor look like my practice piece here. I'm going to prepare my clean water on the ice cube tray and paper towel ready on my desk. And I'll be using round paintbrush number one, number two, and number four and Vigelo Machine Gold watercolor set this time. I'm going to paint the petal with clean water first and then paint a color on this later. I'm going to wet my paper as I'll be showing some wet in wet watercolor painting technique. I'm making sure my paper is evenly saturated with water. Then I'm going to mix up some light red and lay down the pigment on my petal for the base layer. It's important to keep the colors clean and bright for the first wash. You can watch the color flows into the moistened area, bleeding towards edges. I'm adding a bit of yellow to my petal to create an interesting spread of strokes. When it comes to color mixing, I prefer to mix the colors on the paper instead of pre-mixing them on a palette. Adding paint to a wet layer of paint on the paper creates a soft and diffused look as the colors mix. This technique is useful for diffusing shapes when you don't want to too much detail. It's important to start painting the flowers while the first layer wash is still wet. As long as the paper is still wet, you can easily make corrections if something goes wrong. Just blot your brush thoroughly and lift the paint back off the paper. You may need to add clean water to the surface before lifting, or you can use paper towel to wipe off the color. After my couple of layers dried, I'm going to create some highlights and details using my number one round paintbrush. I'm just adding some thin strokes to my petals. I'm looking at the stamp image on the back of my stamp set for the reference to see where the shades and highlights should be. Now I'm going to turn on some music and speed up the process so you can watch me color. I'll be back once I'm done water coloring.
I'm going to draw the outlines of the petals to define the shape of my flowers. You can also create new petals by drawing the outlines from the center of the flowers to the tip. I'll be working my background. I'm adding some watercolor wash with light brown on the background to enhance my flower arrangement. I decide to go even further with adding some ink splatters with green and black watercolor paint to add some interest. I'm drying my watercolor panel between each color as I don't want them to mix together. I'm also going to mix perfect pearl powder with clean water to add some shimmer to my watercolor panel. This splatter watercolor technique is a bit random but can create some very fun results. So I strongly recommend you give it a try if you haven't done it yet. I'm going to use my heat tool again to make sure that everything is dry before I move on. It's now time to open my sentiment. This is my container full of sentiment leftovers. Every time I make a card, I ended up having extra sentiment banners or die cuts. So I've been collecting them for my future projects. Having these sentiment banners is very useful because I can match them on my current project to check which type of sentiments goes well with my project. I'm going to prep a piece of black cardstock with ink cut ink embossing match powder bag to prevent any stray powder from sticking to unwanted areas. I'm going to use the sentiment from the Hopton Heart stamp set and ink up my stamp with alternate embossing ink. I will apply some alternate white embossing powder over my stamped sentiment and tap off the excess. Then I'm going to heat set the sentiment using my heat tool until it's completely melted. Next, I'm going to trim my sentiment into a thin banner using a craft knife and ruler. By the way, this is my all-time favorite ruler. With the metal on the side of the ruler, it helps me cut paper in straight without cutting out the edge of the plastic ruler. Then I'm mounting my watercolor panel on the A2 size top folding white card base using double sided tape. After trimming each side of my sentiment banner, I'm going to mount it on the card front using 3M foam tape to give some dimension. I'm using my T-square ruler to place my sentiment banner in straight. To add some interest to my card, I'm going to add some white dust in the center of my flowers using a white gel pen. White dust look lost against my light colored flowers, so I decide to use a black pen to add dust. I think the black dust give more finished look to my flowers. What do you think? I'm going to stamp some sentiment inside my card using the Crafty Life stamp set. This stamp set is designed for all paper crafters out there and packed with fun phrases and sentiments in a trendy mix of fonts. I'm also going to stamp the handmade circle image on the back of my card to finish it off. I almost gave up making this video tutorial as I wasn't happy with my first card. And I'm still not sure if I like how my second card turned out. Even though this is not my best watercolor card, I hope you still can learn something from my video. Before I go, I'm going to pull the camera back to show you how my craft desk looks like off the camera. I push everything aside to each side of my desk until I finish my project. I'm not proud of my messy desk, but I still love it. How about you? Are you a messy crafter like me? Please leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. That's all for today. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you won't miss any new video from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time with another video. Bye-bye!